Hey everybody, this is Rhino, and we're back to Lego Harry Potter years 1 through 4. Let's continue. So, two or three levels are going to get done in this recording. We just kind of need to run through them. Doesn't really matter who we pick in free play, unless we picked somebody that was just completely the wrong person to play as. Uh, then we would just be adding a character for no reason. So, I'm trying to hit this thing and it's not working. Um, why would that not be working? Well, whatever. So, we've got some lostness that I can't apparently destroy or couldn't target it. So this is mostly is just a desire to run through this section as fast as possible. I don't need the stone uh, studs. I don't. So pressing Y may let you jump a little higher. Yeah, it's good to know. Uh, I really don't need anything. Just to, to find the character models. And Switch here to the right characters. Now, are we up to. I think we're up to the point where we see Voldemort feeding off the life force of the unicorn. Or something like that. I believe that's what we're doing. There's. Several instances. Well, no, the spiders are pointing us in the right direction. There's several instances, though, that they end up in the forest. Again, these these kids—they're sent to this this school, and it just backs up to what one could only describe as a humongously uh, large forest. Uh, surrounding it with an incredible amount of magical creatures that are dangerously infesting that forest. It's like, I'm surprised. That, well, I mean, it even starts that way, doesn't it? The very first, first year, a troll comes into the school. Why is this school not just in the wizard city, wherever or whatever the wizard city actually is? I guess it's not that big. And I have to assume that. So, Professor Sinistra. Sinistra. Sounds like sinister. I don't believe that's but there is this water. Hmm. How do I get to that water? Hmm. So... Destroying everything in an attempt to just figure out what's going on. What I'm supposed to do. I hop on this and I can fly here. Is there something more than this? Do I have a character that can swim? Hmm. I don't have like the shark character. Not that much. I have these two plants under the ground. Hmm.
so that's not one of them. So how do I shoot that and open that gate? If I stand here and do it from way over there. I guess that works. There we go. Now we've got some frogs going through a thing. And I moved so fast. I don't believe the frog was supposed to just be right there. So, easily to miss that, obviously. Right. We got two more of those plants going around. Little fairies are being mischievous again. I don't, I don't get why, but they do. Seem to do it. Right. Uh, up this way. Jump over here. Make sure we've collected and gotten everything. I think we have. So, the plant here. A lot of the stuff here to get these to get these crests are just boring and unimaginative. Repetitive as all get out. Not very many items compared to a modern Lego game. It's just simply seeing the same plants over and over again. There's probably only six styles of plants in the whole game. This is it's a weird way to describe it, but this game is amazingly finished for a completely unfinished game. It, it's really, really unfinished, but it somehow still plays. It, it doesn't crash that much. It, it's not missing entire levels, other than the fact that it's missing the entire second half of the game. Uh, I guess they figured out ways to make it seem like it was a finished product when it really isn't. It's missing so much. And, but sneakily made so you don't realize just how much you're missing compared to a regular Lego game. And also, I guess it is also kind of fair to say Lego has this, this well, GT games. Yeah, it has this bad habit of making games halfway through. So instead of getting Lego The Lord of the Rings and The Hobbit, you get uh, Lego The Lord of the Rings, and a few years later you get Lego The Hobbit. Um, instead of getting Star Wars Episode 1 through 6, uh, you get Star Wars Episode 3 through 6, and then a few years later they get... Uh, episode 1 to 3, and then they get combined. Oh, this, I'm having some significant trouble there. Let's, let's see. Do I have everything? Are we ready for this battle to happen? I think we might be. I need to. I need to switch to the spell. Spin it and throw it. Now we need to just go through some more sets of spiders. So we get to this guy. Spin him and throw him. I really don't like the beat and the again. It's not a good way to put in the input. One more time. 
come on. There we go. Alright, there is one more thing. Now the problem with this is going to be following the right sides. So I need to just move very slowly to make sure I'm doing the right thing. Ignoring. I think it's on the left. Now I have invincibility, so. Alright, there. Everything else is on the right. Carefully maneuver this vehicle. Uh, do I just miss some? Uh, so I'm just pinching my way here. Four. Looks like the other two are on the left. There might be another one on the right. Yes, there is. I almost missed it. Alright, so the last one's gotta be on the right, right? These races are never fun, even in regular Lego games. Carefully looking both ways, so I don't want to miss it. I think it's on the left, but it could be on the right, because it could have changed. Yes, I have 400 million studs. That's long since stopped being a good factor. Start speeding things up. Did I get all three? One, two. No, I didn't get three. Maybe I already had one. I got all the house cards. So that's good to know. Did I get the student in peril? Let's skip the true wizard. Let's skip this. House Crest is a good old brick, True Wizard is a good old brick. Hmm. Now, chapters weren't a thing when this game came out. So, if there is something I missed in that third race, I will have to play the whole game over again. Ah, uh, nope, we got very lucky there. I don't have to play that level again. Move on to the next one. So this is the Basil's thing, which I'm looking around here to see if there's anything to get in this first section. It doesn't look like there is. Alright, so... Let's 
I thought for a second she was doing dark magic. She's got hearts all around her. I was like, oh, no, that's a different thing. How about switch the cat now? Go cat, go. I'm supposed to come over here and do something with this. Does that give me enough pieces to build something? Hmm. I'm supposed to come punch this toilet. enough pieces from those broken toilet pieces to build a doorway. Again, I don't believe there was anything here to collect. Already got my own. So moving forward. So here's a question, why did Tom Riddle have a secret passage to the Basilisk in the girls' bathroom? That doesn't make the most amount of sense. In fact, it doesn't make any sense at all, does it? We've got a ton of things here. Let's go and get all these done with fast aid. Put this together, Snape. See, I could totally understand, like, hiding a a basilisk in a bathroom but it makes kind of sense but I would say you would do it in the, the boys bathroom because that's the one Tom Riddle would be expected to walk into and so he could like two three times a day sneak off there and not really be questioned But the 
this. Open this. Open this. There's the green wizard. There's Gilderoy Lockhart. Just like two characters right back to back because they just didn't want to work on it. Obviously. Obviously this is rushed out. How awful that must be, and the, of course I don't know if that's really the case, but that's what I'm speculating here, is that this game was rushed out, and how awful that must be this, to be told, this project we gave you like a year to work on, we need it in six months now, so take everything you've done up to this point and, and make, it, make a whole game out of this half-finished game. There's many ways that could go about and happen. They, they, you could be the company that comes in and tries to fix some other company's problems. Where they're, they're saying this, this game is way over budget, so we need to finish it. Or you could be the original creator of the game, and it could be your baby, and you could feel like now you can't right by the creation. Could be that the game, the people making the game didn't care at all. That is certainly a possibility too. It's just as believable that a video game producer might only be working on a video game for a paycheck as much as anything else. Although, for as much as they're overworked and underpaid, you could probably be in a better career and, and do a lot better than programming video games if you don't care about the project. I guess that's why there's a decent amount of moving around that happens amongst the video game industry. So this is the weird point where you have to bend this, but it doesn't really look like that's what you were going to do. Let's see. Hmm. I think I've got everything here, so I can just move on to the next section. Alright, now we're in the fight. So, as the fight goes, we have all these new things we can cast spells on. So there's a pirate ship. There's the base of death. Come over here. We hop in the pirate ship. Come this way. This dragon. Right. There's a plant up there to hit. And some plants over here. We need the light up area for this. Let's go and hit this. There's a birdhouse. So Accomplished two things there. I'm double tasking. So we have one more character. Let's see. We'll stand here and let him just crash into this. 
don't know if I really actually need him to do this. Not, but. So I can't hit that. So we, we're gonna have to take out the Basilisk first. Do you speak partial tongue? Um, I think you do. I think I've gotten everything else, so let's just pull this. So here comes the phoenix dropping the hat. As the basilisk is now hurt. So I gotta run over here now that the ghost of Voldemort is aboard. There's Tom Riddle. And maybe Tom Riddle. Maybe that's why I. It wasn't working quite right. Is that I kept thinking Justin Finch Finnery was Tom Riddle. I think that may have been the case. What are we trying to do? some music pieces which I don't think are necessary. I think I've already done those. I guess I should run around and do it again just to make certain. One thing we could come back and check is just make sure that there's nothing here. I guess there isn't. Did we free somebody in turn? How am I supposed to finish this? to get this all the way from over here.
I do not remember doing this le level. So we got all those pieces there. Ah, yes. Now it works. Um, oh, I gotta hover these chains to pull it downward. Pull down the chains. Jump down here like Mario. So I can run back here. And I can that. But then I think I think I'm pretty much done. I suppose I think I'm supposed to just take this and stick it right under his neck. Come on. Come on, sword, work. There, finally. So we got, did we get three characters? Yes, for Tom Riddle we did get three characters. Did we get all the house blocks? Yes we did, good. Did we get the student in peril? Normally in a LEGO game I'd be playing one level per recording, particularly in free play because that takes even longer than playing it in story mode. The cutscenes have never been longer than the extra things you can do in free play. The fact that I can do three levels in the recording, and I'm only going 45 minutes so I could probably do four levels if I was going for an hour kind of tells you you're getting one-fourth of a as long of a game. Let's see, so we have everything on the Basilisk. We have everything on year two done. Which means we can take a slight victory lap here and go build year two and see what it is. The Chamber of Secrets. I just now remembered that was the name of your team. I just like to play. The Whomping Willow. Something we didn't even see in the game. So, we're almost to 2 billion. And let's start level 1 now of your... Three, because no basket man. So we only need three to character tokens and one house crust, and to free the student in peril. So there's not even as much to do in this one. We start off as true wizard, of course. I don't know. Right now trick here. Let's twist this and get the three wizards in the picture to start helping me with this book. Which, I don't know what book this is or what the deal with the book is, but it probably had something to do with something. Again, this time 
The green wizard tries to hide. That's that. Done completely. Here we are running late for Hogwarts as it seems we are at the beginning of every year. I do bad dark magic. I don't even know who this character is because it doesn't say the name. There he is. Well, he can't do it through the steam either. Alright, so we'll start by cutting off the steam. I haven't talked about the lack of dialogue here. It's it's been a long time, but it's still very bad. Uh, a poor decision, particularly for this game. Uh, Ernie Prang. So we, we attach this and the lack of dialogue becomes kind of obvious. You get this weird sound. Instead of talking. Clearly Harry Potter takes place in Britain. Clearly they would be speaking English. It, it's not a fancy world where you just you could say, well actually they're speaking their own language and it's being translated by the author. No, clearly, clearly this is these would be native English speaking people. Um, let's see, I guess I just pick this up and go this way. The speaker is very annoying too, by the way. <coughs> well, this guy has a shovel, can he dig? Damn. Interesting. Interesting move. What are we building? So we need this hold, so we'll just skip doing the whole spell part and switch to a character to control things. Nope, it has to be a stronger character. There he is. Pretty much has to be him. I bet we could unlock the girl that he, he was interested in dating and maybe get a, a secondary character that's strong, but I bet those are the only two characters in the entire game that are considered strong. This is a good point of where uh, LEGO games in particular would be better served if there was just a menu I could hit start and like see the characters, get a little background dialogue on them, uh, get some explanation uh, or an intro, uh, particularly for Harry Potter. But Almost every LEGO game has secondary characters that are easy to forget. Or very possibly just this might be the first introduction of the story to the kid that's playing, so 
Like, if this is a child's introduction to Harry Potter, I don't think he knows anything about Harry Potter by the time he's done playing this game. I think he's wasted 22 plus hours, I would guess, of, of playing a game to learn nothing. Right, before I get in there and do all of that, I want to make sure collected and done everything. Hmm. I think I have. And so this might be the end of the level too. Nope. Hit the B button instead of the X button. It's very strange. Sometimes you use the X, sometimes you hit B. Right. So we need this Save the student player, and there's only one left. I think I'm kind of safe. Just move the fort to story forward. Hmm. Well, now I still have to do the things. So let's find the big box in this. Break that ice. Break it off screen. There's been several instances where the camera is just totally in the wrong place. Uh, right now, let's put all these presents on here. And we're through. Done that was a great, great example of how the targeting is very easy. Shoot a bolt anywhere close to it, and it will hit. Okay, so we need a green key. Get to the green key, I think. I'll just switch to an animal. Did I not select an animal? Okay. We'll then use her ability this way. something in this chest. It's glowing. There we go. There's the green key. Hand over dial or whatever you would call it. I don't even know what you call it. Come on ice pick. No flamethrower. As a concept of melt ice, the ice concept doesn't really come back into play. But you could have done flamethrower, you could have done fire, you could have done jackhammer, a multitude of potential different ways to break the ice. And they went with the most straightforward, simplistic one they could think of twice. here really don't have to 
be anything more, so I'll just go and take out these people with my spell. So did we get everything? I think we did. We got three things, which we did. Then we we already got we have all the house quests, yes. So that's another hundred percent level done. This is so so easy. Thinking back to like Lego Star Wars, their first Telltale game, uh, no, not Telltale, uh, the first Lego game they made, uh, TT games made, uh, Traveler's Tales is what it used to be called. Uh, thinking about how complicated some of the puzzles were, how sneakily they would hide gold bricks and character tokens, uh, although I'm not sure there were character tokens in the first game. They really made it a difficult game, even for an adult, to 100%. Here, you don't really need to try at all, and you will get 100%. You just gotta go through the motions, and that's what we'll continue to do in the next level, uh, next recording. We'll probably do three more, and then if we do three more there, then three more there, and then the two remaining there. We're talking four, maybe five uh, more episodes and we'll be done. That seems about right too, because we're at 72.2%. We only have, what is that? 30 characters to find left. Six characters, students in peril to find. Uh, 11 true wizards, and 11 house crests and 30 gold bricks all of those seem to work together to say we're gonna be done now at this rate I doubt I'm gonna make it to 10 billion studs I bet I will make it to 3 and probably even 4 billion but I doubt I'll make it even to 5 anywho that's gonna be it for this recording as always I ask you to like share subscribe Comment if you want to and watch every second of my videos. All of that helps out. If you want to support me further, you can click on my name righto. On the right will be a blue button that says support this channel. Click it, make it a donation. And if you want a friend or follow me on basically any social media sites, there's a whole bunch of links down below. Thank you for watching. Have a good evening.